Good morning, everyone. How you doing today? Paul Trini here with the one and only Victoria Seamer. We were able to keep her here. We've locked the door. We locked her in here. <laughs> yeah, She's been, been here, here since yesterday. Help. Yeah, just <laughs> spent the night in the studio. Yeah, we treat our guests right. No, but it's good having you. So, how are you today? I'm, do I'm doing wonderful. It's Thursday. Day three. It's, it's Friday for me, but Thursday for everybody else. <laughs> exactly. Or, it's, totally, maybe... it's totally like our yeah. Friday. <laughs> so, so, so might be, you'll get a Friday vibe from us. Uh, today is kind of a little bit unique because we don't have a challenges today, but essentially we have a portfolio review. So check out the portfolio review tab. Uh, clean up your portfolio. Make sure you have everything in there that you need and go ahead and submit through the portfolio review tab. And uh, how we'll do this is in about an hour and a half. Uh, we'll review a couple portfolios and we'll probably pick them according to the segment. So since you're doing Photoshop, uh, like Photoshop type of manipulation, uh, like compositing, uh, and even if maybe there's some animated GIFs in there, that's great. But that's the type of portfolios we'll try to pick out. So if you do have like an infogram or inf infographic, infogram, <laughs> infogram? is an infogram thing? I think it should be. Uh, but like infographics, uh, you know, submit during that segment. That would be with just three from three to five p.m. So, uh, and again, after this is uh, Tutvid Nathaniel Dodson. So again, photo manipulation there. Shauna Lynn from one to three. She does a lot of uh, like hand lettering. So if your portfolio uh, is similar to that, now it's cool. So again, this is uh, day three, our last day. We're gonna get a little choked up. Get like, a little teary-eyed. Oh, I was trying to grab Jesse. That's yeah, weird. that sounded weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Nathaniel and Shauna Lynn doing hand lettering, and then Jesse and Taylor uh, doing infographics. So <clears throat> we'll try to review portfolios that pertain yeah. to this Send me segment. your weird photoshops. Send, send them. <laughs> send the, send the, f the photos that are photoshopped. <clears throat> but. All right, so we yeah. have been working for the past two days in the timeline, which I guess I can just, I don't have anything open right now, but we can just, um, I guess I can show really quickly from yesterday and the day before, just a quick highlight of two things we already did. So I yesterday I worked on this rose manipulation that I did like four or five years ago and when we opened it we saw how bad and, and you were like what is this what is that? what was I thinking here um, so we redid it and made it so I wasn't killing all the pixels and then we animated it so if I hit the little space bar it looks a little jiggly right now because it's uh, it's rendering but oh, now it's smooth and so this is what we did yesterday I just turned the rose into a smart object, and then I used some keyframes in this transform tab um, in the timeline. And I just moved the rose around a little bit and made sure that the last frame and the first frame were in the same position. Cool. So it has the effect of looping. Yeah. So this was a fun one. And then, um, what else do we do? Oh yeah. <laughs> to get everyone's spirits up on this <laughs> Thursday morning, <laughs> we'll go back to this uh, really awesome. Uh... People love your desktop, by the way. Thank you. It's how so... I keep myself organized. <laughs> and the joke is, the more work I have, the sadder he gets. Oh. <laughs> it's because I have to add more, uh, more folders. It's yeah. good. I think uh, everyone should have weird backgrounds because it really keeps you in check with keeping your files organized. I like how, you, yeah. I mean, yours, yeah, definitely has personality. So. Um, so this is something we worked on together the other day, and I'll open the PSD, but the general technique was that we rotoscoped this cowboy from an Adobe stock image we licensed, and then I um, used clipping masks and blending options to create uh, this effect, and then a day-to-night manipulation to kind of get the illumination on the ground. And so that was a fun little one. This one is a really cool, it, it had a, a weird effect where I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with it. Uh, like I'm still, it's still open. Like okay. it's, uh, I haven't finished that Photoshop yet. If you guys are, you are catching the, my drift. the cowboy like, one? No, well it's like the technique behind the cowboy one. We mm. got, um, where is it? Where's my PSD? 
Oh yeah, you can see I was trying. I was trying some other stuff out. Obviously, I was thinking about maybe like making a woman dancing, but it's still not right. I don't know. It's like having something on the tip of your tongue, but it's on the tip of my eyeballs, my tip of my brain. Uh huh. And I don't know. Um, I don't know how I want to finish it yet. But I really liked where we went. I'll just turn on my layers really quickly. Get out of here. Good to have you back, Terrence. Welcome, everybody. Sisse, Mara, welcome. Matt from Denver, the fellow Denverite. Nice. Uh, Nathan. All right, so this was a really cool accidental effect that we ran into when I deleted out the noise layers from, um, from my cowboy. So this is what I was intending on. But then for some reason we toggled it off for a second and I was like, oh, wait a second. This is super, super cool. And so this is really just inner glow, outer glow. Yeah. Um, and I like the inner which glow. It's just like it blows my mind that that's how easy it was to do. Yeah. Well, and I didn't know there there's an inner glow that will start from the center of the object too. That was news to me. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of little treats in here. Yeah. So you can change. There's a lot of weird stuff. I just dec ugh, I definitely recommend going in and just clicking on stuff because that's where the best stuff happens. Is yeah. when you're accidentally like, whoa, this is way better than what I was trying to do. Yeah, it's really interesting watching you work because you'll. You'll work on something and you're like, well, that's not quite there yet, but you know you're going to use it somewhere. So yeah. You, it's just fascinating. In to, my like, it's like I, uh, it's like hoarders, but for, for PSDs. Yeah. <laughs> where I've got PSDs like 20 hoarders. I'm working on right now. <laughs> it looks really organized, but that's the underneath thing. the surface, he's got a lot more tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, that's the thing, like you might not end up using something and you're all disappointed because you spent so much time on it, but yeah. that stuff always reemerges. You're like, yeah. oh yeah, that thing that I tried six months ago, here's a perfect use case let's, for it. Let's just give him a new tier right now. Let's stay organized, let's guys. Day three. Tier. We'll put him down here. He's definitely like one-sided in his tears right now. So I downloaded a bunch of stock videos, uh, previews ahead of time this time, so we didn't um, waste any time for mm -hmm. me looking for images in front of you guys. <laughs> um, and we're gonna do some manipulations. So. Good question, Mel. So basically the, we're doing portfolio reviews today. It is basically your Behance like profile page. That's what we, we tend to call your portfolio. So, you know, <clears throat> Behance on that forward slash. You can even like go to mine really quickly. Yeah, that's what this is about to go You guys here. can just like be like, oh, Victoria, you need to like get it together. Ah! Behance on that forward slash Wichoria. So it'd be like your name. Yeah. Behance is a great place to be. Um, I've had a few things that I think this geometric reflections project actually is what got Adobe and myself working together because it got it got featured. It gets featured sometimes in these little mm. uh Yeah. You put your stuff out there and there's a really high likelihood that people are gonna look back. And on Behance, the people that look back are more important than the people on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Interesting. So. That's cool. Um, uh, and make sure you tag your work too. So if you did use say XD or Photoshop, you know, obviously put the tools down. No, oh, I hope I'm doing that. Typically, dun, 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 it, well that's, dun, dun, dun. oh I did. That's I did. How I, okay, good. <laughs> because I'm sure the Photoshop yeah. team is like searching for the best in Photoshop. Oh God, it's crazy you how know. many. This is the most simple exercise I've ever done and it got me in Wired Magazine and like blew up on Behance. Wow. It was just something I was doing with coffee in the morning to just do something, like to wake my brain up. That's really, um, that's really impressive. Which is funny, I was like, come on, of all the things, wow. That is so You impressive. never know, uh, you never know what's gonna, yeah. people are and gonna get really excited about. you think that would about. be lucky, but you're just, you're constantly like working. You're con she wakes up, what time did you get up today? Like four Well, okay, so I'm like East Coast time. So I'm trying to practice getting up at eight o'clock every day East Coast time, because I have a job now and I need to make sure I'm yeah. not like living that freelance life like I used to. Yeah. Um, so I've been waking up California time 5 a.m. and this morning it was 4.30 in the morning here. So I'm down to 7.30 yeah. East Coast. And I feel like as your eyes are opening, you're like, I feel like you're It's you're like falling cracked. asleep with my laptop in my yeah. lap. I just yeah. wake up and I boot up. I'm like a <laughs> robot. Um, <laughs> sweet, so I'm excited to see your portfolios, but enough diddly daddling. <laughs> Let me jump in. 
Um, actually, that would have been a good transition. So, <laughs> behance.net slash witcheria. Um, so I've been doing these geometric reflections. There's one behind me um, for, I guess, five or six years now. It actually was the inspiration behind the Adobe Max identity that I helped create two years ago, which was a really fun project. It was really cool to see it work in mm -hmm. typographic forms. Um, and so today, I think I'm going to play with putting these in, in motion. That would be awesome. Taking it to the next level. I've done it once or twice before, but um, it's always I fun to bring it, it back. And it's a really easy execution, so you guys can all try it yourself. Um, the only thing that gets a little funky is the type of imagery you use. Like, you'll notice I use a lot of, like, smoky-looking mountains, and um, mm -hmm. there's just certain perspectives that don't, that don't work for yeah. this. Um, the inspiration, so in college, I had essentially a thesis that was called The Fragmentation of the Self, which was about, like, Lacan and Freud and I may I mean it had you know I've got a long a big paper that I wrote <laughs> essentially breaking down um, human consciousness in fra as fragments and so I didn't realize because I left I had like a thesis project where I did this crazy thing where I broke like 200 mirrors and then made this photo booth so when you stepped inside of it your whole face would like explode yeah. um and it was really disorienting to see yourself all over the place. And then I started, if you go way back in my Instagram feed, you'll see I started playing with clipping masks and breaking images. And then I started doing it this way. And I didn't realize that I've been doing, it's like repetition compulsion. I've still been doing my thesis over and over again as like five years later, for some reason, I'm still breaking stuff apart, hmm. even though it's not necessarily rooted in that other thing, it seems there's a pattern there. I don't, yeah. I don't know why I do it, but uh, no, that's good. It's good to kind of know the backstory. Only, uh, kind of being... Freud could uh, help me break it down. Just yeah. kidding. Freud wasn't a huge fan of women. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll start. I've got a nice mixture of stuff, but I'm kind of digging the this Adobe stock. Um, I think that I I put in Tokyo. I don't know if this is actually Tokyo, but I'm kind of digging this. I'm, a, I'm living my best Blade Runner life right now, I think. And I think <laughs> that so I want to, instead of doing these um, really ethereal uh, landscapes with fog, we're actually going to try something with a cityscape first, just because, yeah, I don't know, I think it's fun. We can play with the colors a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. And so I already actually practiced a little bit with this one, so I guess I'm going to actually just license it, because I was kind of digging it. Adobe stock. <laughs> Beep, boop, boop. All right, deal with me doing this for two seconds. Do we know what this is called? This is called... Just copy paste. Bear with me. Is that how you Google it? In a... Ah, that should work. Oh, Night scenery yeah. around Tokyo. All right. Uh, Imperial Palace. License and save to computer. Woo! All right, Done. so there's a few things right off the bat I know I need to do. If we're gonna do a geometric reflection, we obviously need more space because this guy is super crunched. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do right when this uh, decides to download. And I feel like, because you're kind of still doing that masking and the inversion. Oh, this would be a good one. I think this one will yeah. be a really good one. See, I have an eye for it because I've done these like, I don't know, countless, amounts of times where I, there's a few where I'm not sure if they're gonna work, but like I think this one would be really cool. But I don't know if there's like too much chaos up here, but this would be super uh, sick. That it almost looks so fake. cool. I mean, um, to have those clouds like overlap in the, like an inverted version of the mountain. I'm excited. I'm actually doing a class on this astrophotography and time lapse next week so that I can start actually. This is amazing. Um, bringing photography like this into my workflow, because, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, you can't buy a camera that doesn't take video these days, so. Um, so, yeah, and I honestly, for those of you that are just getting into it, 
back in the day, you'll probably recognize some of these images. I definitely used Unsplash and Pixabay, all of those public domain stock websites to practice on. And because, mm -hmm. you know, five years ago, I wasn't a photographer. I was a designer with weird ideas. And then it got to a point where stock photography wasn't matching what I was trying to create. And so then I picked up a camera and I became a photographer. Mm -hmm. But um, there's Out no shame necessity. in like going through and finding public domain photos to practice on. Because Yeah, we encourage you, you know. to, like even when we have the challenges, of course, use, use watermarked images. We have given away an answer your question, you know, stock credits before, uh, you know. All uh, right, so this is almost done. Stream. I guess I can just start. I'll just start with the this guy, and I'm pretty sure I can just replace it. So I'm just going to open Photoshop. And so I already have my timeline open, but I'm going to close this out. And I'm just going to show you guys how to do it one more time. You go to Window, Timeline, boom. And I already had a video in there, so I didn't need to click anything, but yeah. And there technically, a, yeah. No, keep going. No, I think you're, we were going to say the same thing. <laughs> um, well, this is what I was talking about yesterday. So things are going to get a little funky because I'm in a video group. If I had actually started the other way around where I um, I start, what is the size of this video I just downloaded? Um, get info. Yeah, Matt, Matt Grogan's right, though. He's, he's thinking that 1920. The, the world is saturated with stock photos from its splash. Like you recognize, yeah. I recognize unsplash photos, right? You'll yeah, I know. I mean, because it's the first time where there's actually some pretty Good. sexy yeah. stock photography that's available for free. And so people have been using them, especially in like web, web, like web design. I see the, those unsplash photos like all over the place, yeah. especially in WordPress templates. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so my, the difference, I'm setting it up now this time. So you can either drag it in and it automatically opens, or we can do create new. It's 1920. Uh, I'm just doing 1920 by 1920 because I know I need some space. And now if I drag the video in, it won't be in a group like it was in that um, the, the but other way just, around. Because you just dragged it in. Yeah. So okay. I dragged it into a canvas that already existed. But now I'm going to create video timeline. So there's two workflows to pretty much get to the same um, the same place. Ooh, educational material on photography, YouTube. And like these streams, all, you, you guys do photography ones too where the Lightroom editing and other stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, I Googled my way to, to where I'm at. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of information out there for yeah. tutorials. I mean, I've used Skillshare, I've used just YouTube tutorials. I've used, now I'm at a point where YouTube tutorials irritate me because for the most part, there's only one nugget I don't understand like mm. how to get to. Yeah. And I don't need all of the, it's other not stuff. BS, <laughs> all the yeah. other stuff to get there. So I like step-by-step -step tutorials now because I can just like scroll through and be like, oh, ding, ding, ding. Okay. That's what I don't know how to do. Gotcha. Um, you are like. But just like best Photoshop tutorial 2018. Um, uh, you could Google how to shoot levitation photography. There's a lot of tutorials on that technique, how to shoot a time lapse. Um, you just start figuring out, what you need to do is figure out the language behind whatever you're interested in. And those are the key words that you need to just put in when you're Googling. Mm -hmm. you, so you have to like figure out what you're talking about. So for me, now I, a new one that I wasn't really familiar with is luminosity masks. Mm. And um, there's all these crazy skin retouching tutorials that have all these names um, like what is it? A two pass. A, I see. I'm already forgetting one of them. I'd have to like redo a whole Google circle to figure out what I'm talking about. Yeah. But um, yeah, you just you have to figure out what you're looking for and then the language behind it, and then it's pretty easy to dig up. That's um, good. so I've dragged my photo down. If you had dragged it in alone, just I would go into image canvas size resize and make it uh, a square so that we have some room right now. And then obviously I don't need a black background, so I'm gonna make an adjustment layer, a solid color. Ooh, you can tell I've already tested this photo uh -huh. out. And what I, I use this little eyedropper and I just try to select an area in my, so there's this actually nice. two ways we can do this. this Instead of just use. doing a solid color, let's actually get a little bit um, 
Let's get a little bit sneakier and let's do a gradient. Um, it's nice that that uh, cityscape skyline is not going to be moving. I don't know why. Sounds good. For some reason, my I'm starting over again. So yeah, Chaman brings up a good point. So essentially, we're kind of making a cinemagraph if you wanted to get technical, right? Yeah, we we uh, we will be essentially making a cinemagraph. Yeah. Well, yeah. not exactly because I'm not masking out cinemagraphs. When I think of them, you take a video, and then you take one of the like frames you really like, stick it above the video, essentially in its own layer, and then you uh, erase out the part you want in motion and the rest of it is still. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess technically anything looping could be a cinemagraph. Is anything that's a GIF a cinemagraph? I don't know what the rules no. are, but I do like Reddit cinemagraphs. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, we can get all technical about it. It really doesn't matter. But once you post this, you should do hashtag cinemagraph so it gets picked up by more. <laughs> you know, I don't um, know. It's quite a quite a fun word. I'm trying to see why. I can't figure out why my, uh, do I need to do a gradient fill? Gradient map instead? Oh, this makes more yeah. sense. Technically, a cinemagraph are still photographs in which a minor element's repeated. Uh, and movement okay. occurs. So instead of a color fill, for some reason, color fill usually works for me, but it's being a it's being a jerk today. So I did a adjustment layer gradient map instead. Um, I think it's usually probably because I use a different process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click this and it's gonna give me this blue gradient that kind of defaulted. And what I'm gonna do is I want I can see that it's darker on both edges and lighter in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to make make it a three-point gradient for now. If I was going to be really technical about this, I would probably do a lot more than three points to get a really nice gradient. But for now, I think we can we can work with this. So I'm going to just sample near the edges for these. I just double clicked on those. Um, and then my middle one should be like, I don't know, something like this. And we can't see it right now because it's, um, I need to flip the gradient. Where am I? How do I do this? Gradient type. Hmm. You want to flip it? Yeah. So it's like, is it reverse? No, it's doing the, uh, or maybe it is. Yeah. Right? It's hard to tell where the gradient is. Yeah, let me is. pull this above. You know, what I, you, know what I'll, you know what I'll sometimes do in situations like this, is I'll take that top edge and just copy it and then stretch it. So the way I usually do it, just so you guys can see the real thing, is I, and I know this, I've been trying to not do this anymore because it seems silly because you can just do adjustment layers, but I straight use the shape tool. Mm -hmm. I draw my background and then um, edit the gradient this way, which like here I would go in, I click this, I click this, I fix this one, I go to this one, I fix this one, I add one in the middle, I fix it, or, and now I can see here, I just, I don't know why, for some reason it seems to me like I have more options in this panel. Um, so I'll click OK for this, and now I've got options here where I can like move the gradient around. Um, but I feel like generally I'm pretty. Oh. Here we go. Maybe I need like two of these. OK. Sorry, I'm getting like all. OCD now. You do your thing. So, uh, oops. Minneapolis is in the house. Welcome, Brent. Always curious where people are from. Diego, welcome, my friend. Good to have you here. This one just seems so intense over here. Maybe I need to just lighten this guy up. Bruno, Bruno works with gradients the same way too. Yeah, I don't know. You know, everyone's got, you know, has their own process. The, mm -hmm. the great thing about Photoshop. And it's always fun um, fun to see what other people do, because there's always a million ways to get to one yeah. outcome, and everyone has a different thought process on how to do things. Um, 
And it's nice that, you know, not no one's particularly more right than other people unless you're deleting pixels and then you're definitely in the wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so can anyone guess uh, probably what I'm gonna do next? Yeah? Hey Esther from Cleveland, good to have you here, welcome. Uh, you're gonna take it and flip it. You're Not yet. Flip it in the reverse. first thing it. is, I you no. know for the oh, most part my you're gradient. You're gonna blend it. The gradient helped blend a little it. bit, but blend this is uh, this isn't something where I didn't want to put too much effort into this. I just matched the background a little bit so that I don't have to do as much. But what I'm gonna do now is click my layer mask for my video layer. I'm gonna go into my brush, and I am gonna. I mean, it's zero percent hardness, so it's super soft. Um, I'm gonna keep my flow at 100%. And I'm just gonna, you know, really lightly take out some of these lines that are giving away the fact that I stretched the background. And luckily, it's also hazy because of there's all this light pollution and stuff in cities. So even if I accidentally sort of lighten one of these buildings, mm -hmm. I don't even think it would be noticeable because they already look like they're, the distance makes them a little bit translucent looking anyways. Yeah. Or not translucent, but like foggy. So like check that out. So that's pretty close, and we didn't have to do too much. If I had done just a solid color, you would see. Can you actually turn off those background layers? So like you can, can see the. Li I would have to erase more. Oh. Okay. Which background layers? Oh, just the the gradient and the yeah, just so they can see what you're doing. Yeah. So I there. definitely like accidentally. So if I wanted to, I could also go back through. It doesn't bother me right now, but I could go back through and like paint back in because of the glory of masks, any of these buildings that I made too light, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But I think for now, I'm not too worried about it. So, oh, see what I did? I accidentally deleted the wrong. Yeah, here we go. This is what I don't need. Um. So yeah, so I used the gradient. It just made it so there's just a little bit less work for us right now, and now, I see that in my timeline panel, I need to make this rectangle the same length mm -hmm. as the video file. Otherwise, if you get to, what is six seconds, all of a sudden, oh, oops, something's not right mm -hmm. here. Oops. Mel thinks it looks good. Yeah, I think it's looking good as well. So again, just you guys are so supportive. Uh, in two minutes, we'll do just a random giveaway of this book and oh, portfolio reviews today. So get them so get them to us. Here's another sneaky thing I'm seeing now. So it looked perfect on the first frame, but this is a time lapse, and oh, so the sky changing? actually changed a little bit Ew. in these later ones, and I started to see a line right here. Huh. So I actually do need to go in and do more. Really tight that up. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. Oops, I'm doing the opposite. So that's good to know. So Brent, the book is super modified from Behance. Maybe and I did erase this guy a little too much. Less than two minutes, we'll give it away. So I usually, um, you know, you could work without seeing your layer, but for the most part, you're just trying to make it work with our fake sky. So yeah. um, I like to edit on it because, you know, I'm not going to do work I don't need to do. Yeah. So that this, for the most crazy. part, I guarantee I love watching the twinkly lights too. Yeah, so that's why I'm kind of like vibing with this right now. So we'll hit play. And this is sort of, it's kind of slow rendering right now, but so we've extended the sky for the most part. I think we've solved for that, um, that line we had. And so I'm gonna scrub back to the first layer and I'm actually realizing for this geometric reflection, I might actually want this, this still might not be enough space, but let's figure it out. All right, do you guys want a square or a circle? I personally think a circle is probably gonna look better. Or maybe we could even try, what kind of shapes, guys? You guys got any? Uh, uh I say, well, yeah. Anybody I always have? have an opinion, but. Like we could what do all shape? sorts of stuff. Um, what are you thinking? I mean, I was thinking a B for like Behance, since we're on Behance. Oh, it could be. Of, uh, but should we, should we just, should we do a B? Oh, an octagon, an O, uh, oh, a circle, or an O? Like, I want to do something that has, like, meaning. Actually, um, an O would be interesting because it would turn into, like, an... So first, I'll, let me show you how easy yeah. it is. So we're yeah. going to start... I'm going to do one in a, uh, I don't know, something. I'll do the one circle, and then I'll do... Can you actually pop me the Behance B? Um, like, I'll open an airdrop in a second. 
Um, so uh, let's see. I definitely don't want this gross look ingredient. So I'm gonna go to a solid color, keep it normal. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate um, the layer I just worked on. I'm gonna flip it with the transform tool. You could also go to edit, transform, rotate, and then type in how much you want it to rotate. But I like to do things by hand because it feels tactile. And then we're gonna go move this above because this circle, whatever shape we pick, um, whether it's a circle or you know a B or whatever we're doing, that's gonna be what we're clipping. It's like it's gonna be what's holding the clipping mask. So that always has to be below. So and boom, I made a clipping mask, um, okay. and I can tell. It's looking good. So again, we're doing, we're, we are gonna do a giveaway in a second, by the way. Just make sure you're logged in to Behance. If you're not, that's how we do the giveaway. Essentially, we need to see you chatting away. That's why everybody's going nuts in the chat. Oh, yes. Everybody saw the the giveaway book, timer. Book, 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 book. <laughs> but this is already looking really good. We gotta we gotta get back to this. But we'll give away the giveaway book. Just make sure you're logged in. It is the fancy super modified book. From Behance, it's basically fantastic portfolios. And yeah. are oh. you in here? I can, um, I can I see so. you. I don't think so. I think they would have contacted me. I prefer to free transform and flip. Just make sure you're holding the shift key when you're doing anything with the transform, so you don't skew your image at all. But some people like to do things more calculated. So when I'm doing things in like After That's Effects so or C4D, I'll actually type in like 180 degrees. I won't do it by hand. But okay, nice. Yeah, so. So we're gonna give it this way now. Just be active in chat. Be like, hey, what's up? I'd want to. Was well, your joke book. earlier that this is it's yeah, it's, it's Behance like, in print. Yeah, if you want, if you want all the all the inspiration on Behance.net yeah. in print form, it is super modified. The Behance book. Yes, this you is, might be in this here. Looks super no, awesome. actually, just kidding. This is like the coolest coffee table book. It is. Your friends just wouldn't pay attention to you at all because they'd be too busy. <laughs> nerding out on these beautiful, beautiful... Uh, like, full color, everything from illustration to photography. It's got nice paper. Yeah, nice paper. Uh, really m nice matte finish, not not glossy. Cool paint. Yeah. And we're going to pick a name at random, so just be active in the chat. So how much time, how much more time do they have? We're wrapping it up right now. The Adobe <clears throat> Live team's picking a name. So that's not the name? And punching it in. Not oh, okay. Not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> the GusBot 5000 has picked the name. Go ahead. Today. Emmanuel Moreno. Marino. Emmanuel Marino. Emmanuel. Woo! Congratulations, my friends. Book. Are you? I was trying you to see this. if you would pop up and I can congratu ugh, congratulate you. So, yeah, Emmanuel, if you're with us, I know chat's moving there. Holy Jesus, he's like, yes, yes. I won. Yay. Our first winner of the day. Exclusive right. book. We'll even sign, we'll even have you sign it. <laughs> even you, though I'm not in nothing, it. You have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> you should be in here. Uh, so congratulations. A gift, a gift, sir, uh, giveaway every segment. And then don't awesome. forget about portfolio All reviews. All right, let's dig back in, because we are on shorter time today. I, I loved which, I mean, this oh, is good. we're already <laughs> looking at the wrong thing. Let's <laughs> dig back in. <laughs> All right, so I already noticed uh, my ellipse needs to be the same length. And what I'm going to do here is, uh, you can probably take a wild guess, I'm going to erase the bottom of this. And depending on the background, sometimes you can just use blending modes. Like if the sky was black, I wouldn't have anything to worry about right now, but um, I like to just do the old school method. This is how, it, this is how the series was born. <laughs> just go back to my roots. I can already tell that this is too close. I like to leave a little bit. Um, sometimes I go through and I actually like take the time to fully cut out the buildings so that there's actually a harsh line. But sometimes I actually like these soft edges, especially when it's in a square form because it kind of looks like maybe like lights beaming down. Mm. Like I could change, I could change this right now to a square. Like we're like, mm. I'm not into this this circle. Sorry, bud. I'm gonna just eyeball another rectangle. 
I don't really need to change the fill, but I'm gonna make it black. And I guess it doesn't, ha does it, does it need to be a, a perfect like flip of the exact same thing or can you shift it over? You can do all sorts of stuff. So one technique. Cause you end up with that, it, ooh, it almost looks like a skull. Oh, oh that'd yeah. Be awesome. That could be kind of sp also spooky. Ooh. Oh. Um, so like here it is in a square and I just have to mask it again. Like, oh, I don't like circle, let's try square. But you see these two lines? Um, Looks like two eyes, and you almost have a nose. And we just sneak a mouth um, in there. <laughs> we could just get like a, I could download a, a skull vector and just do that. Honestly, any That'd sort of so vector shape sweet. file is perfect for this. Um, so that yeah, so, so I cool. like these weird little, these little lines. They were really helpful with the Behance logo for not the Behance logo, Jesus, the Adobe Max identity, because I really pulled the the effect down. Um, so these little subtleties are just, uh, I don't know, I like them for some reason. So, all right. Looks like a mask. This looks mushed though. So I'm gonna go image, canvas size. We're all doing our best. Um, I don't really need this background layer. It's irritating me, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm just gonna drag my, I'm using a shape so it doesn't matter because this is a vector, so I can make it a million pixels high and then my computer would break. But, yeah. um, <laughs> so what I need to do here is uh, drag all this stuff down and then I definitely wanna move this up because it just, it needs some breathing room. And I would also offset it. So right now I don't like that it's perfectly mirrored. So I'm yeah. gonna like shift it over. So it like it paying attention to these, uh, this form and trying to find something else that fits. And what I've been doing a lot recently or, um, is this is actually two different images shot from the same perspective. So it's not just one flipped image. So you're shooting a variety of images and the colors are the same and the atmosphere is the same. So you can actually use two different images and get um, a really interesting effect. Um, the same with this collaboration with Dave Krugman. Um, this one is two different images. Um, hmm. uh, so the landscape's slightly different and I think that makes a really magical effect also because it, it's not as repetitive as like a mirror. It's, um, but it was shot from the same, same day. Like these shots are two seconds apart. Hmm. Um, so that's a sneaky way of doing it. When you go out and shoot, just kind of give yourself some options. And then when you're doing this technique, play with um, mixing the photos up. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could probably get wild and even put like a completely different, like we could put a desert in here or something and have it reflected. So it's like, you know, yeah. wishing you were somewhere else or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it, and I, I like your point about just kind of being, keeping in mind the negative space shape that it's making. Yeah, and I see, so even now that I shifted this, um, let's see where I'm at. I'm actually gonna paint some back in, cause now it's not, it's not touching anymore. And then I'm gonna move it. I wanna do this. <laughs> you should just pop, you should pop, you guys should all, this is such a fun. Can we do it? Please? Simple exercise and it creates such interesting effects and it's just like the, the clipping mask for me is just one of the fundamentals of Photoshop and there's so much you can do with it even though it's such a foundational tool, um, especially if yeah. you're doing composites. So let's just like check this out and see if we like the motion. Make a skull. All right, so maybe we need to, uh, are you gonna make a skull in Illustrator right now and then give it to me? Oh yeah, I totally can, yeah. All right, I guess we're, uh, I, actually I guess right we're now. we're getting spooky today. Ooh, we could just put the da dancing cowboy in a reflection. Right? <laughs> I did buy him. <sighs> if you guys okay. wanna actually have a good laugh right now, um, <laughs> I can, uh, I can hook it up, hold on. If you want to get really weird, I didn't even think about doing this ever, but I guess we can also, I think I called it noise. Where is my cowboy? Where did I put him? I, I licensed him and I downloaded him and I don't know where he went. 
Not the HD preview. Maybe it's this? All right, so. <laughs> Or we can just, uh, we could do okay. this instead. I'm gonna toggle this off. Oh man. Now my, uh, my cowboy that we isolated oh, yesterday. Yeah. That's awesome. But he also moves. So it's like a, it's like a double. Oh, I haven't even mm -hmm. thought of this. I could this make. This is good. I love it. He's gonna destroy the city. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to erase some of his legs. Um, let's see what this, uh, just to get silly for a second, we can always mm -hmm. undo this. But this is a good idea. I mean, I like. I, I mean, love I also. Idea. This is funny because you know, just like the other it. day, there's a whole series I'm gonna do probably of this, but I've never actually thought about. I could create really weird abstract shapes that are morphing in um, After Effects, export them, and then use them here so that the reflections are always moving, because this guy. Um, cause we're doing a video clipped into a video now. Yeah, we are. Which is, I haven't done that before. So that's, I'm, yeah. this is exciting stuff, guys. It is. When you're, uh, when you've been doing this, <laughs> this thing for like five years and you're it like, oh looks, my God, there is a new approach. Yeah. So this is, uh. It looks cool. Cowboyzilla. Cowboyzilla. He's a. Man dancing, doing the Cotton Eye Joe in the sky. Um. So this is fun. Uh, this is weird. <laughs> and so what we can do is, actually, I'm not gonna forget that. I'm not gonna use that, but I'm not gonna forget it either. Yeah, see that's I'm gonna re-clip these, <laughs> re these into the square. Um, and so that was cool. I'll save this for now as like, oh, nice. My, my naming conventions could probably use some. We were joking the other day, I was trying to figure out how to find something to show you guys, and you were reading all my files, and it was like, did you even cry today? Yeah. Dot PSD. Yeah. The next one was like, I'm okay. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah, it's, it's like your computer's trying to talk to you in the naming of files. Well, I guess it's uh, all these photoshops are these weird moments in my life, and so sometimes I think I'll remember what was going through my head when I made it. Mm. Um, for the most part, especially with the type stuff, now I just try to name it whatever the type is. That's good. Yeah, like, my every Thanksgiving I like to do a thanks for nothing. Oh, really? <laughs> Guys, uh, adult teen angst really pays off, uh, as you can see. <laughs> nah, I, li I like where, uh, McCrory is, where your head is at, that's good. So like, is it, so if that was Dallas, Texas, it starts to kind of make sense. Oh you kinda yeah. Tie it together. Um, so let's do, let's do something that fits into like more of like the classic vibe. And we'll have a couple baseline ones and then when you've got the skull ready, we'll move into that. So I'm curious about this one. And so I'm gonna pull this one into Photoshop. I'm already in my timeline. Um, and what I'm going to have to do is the same thing. I'm going to go to image, canvas size. Um, wow. Actually, you know what we're going to do for the sake of, I like to edit things super high res, but you guys don't want to watch the circle of doom. So I'm actually going to make this, um, much smaller, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this normally. I like to work in like the biggest possible file. That's why my computer sounds like yeah, it has know. asthma. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go to canvas size, and now I'm gonna, uh, I don't know, I'll give myself like 2,000 pixels or something, you know. There are no rules. It's the wild, wild west. Wow, okay, maybe that's way too many pixels. <laughs> canvas size. I, I agree, Pablo. It says that your work has like an ethereal, like strong spiritual aspect. Or just Thank like you. A, what would you call it? Um, well, like, for me, it's kind of just my like how I decompress, and a lot of times it is how I process my feelings, um, which is you know. What are these feelings you speak of? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sick of them already. I <laughs> know. <laughs> just get rid of them. <laughs> I miss when I was a cold, mean 22 year old. <laughs> now I'm just like, no, okay. <laughs> Hilariously enough, uh, my birthday. I'm turning 30 next week. Um, and uh, Celebrity Birthdays reached out to me in an email and was like, because I deleted my birthday off Facebook. Most people either don't know what age I am or like when my birthday is. 
And so they were like, hey, like, there's been like, Google inquiries about how old you are. And for a while, I was going to be like, no one will ever know. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm like, forget it. Just let it happen. It's, I'm getting ahead of myself out there. here. So here, this one's going to be kind of complicated because this, this background is going to be way more difficult. You can't just like slam a gradient in the background. So I don't know if, I guess what I would normally do is maybe I would look for a, like a starry image that's kind of similar. Like uh, if we keep this open, we go to stock photos, images. Um, and I go to like milky, no, starry sky. You guys think that's a good search? Milky starry sky? Milky starry. So this is like, maybe this is a little bit close. I'm trying to see if I can find a, an image that kind of looks like the sky we're working with. Like this might be kind of close if I change the blue. This is actually really nice. How do I license and save to computer? I'm gonna just gun it on that one. I'll do one more image because we're all in this together. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get access to some videos for you. Um, I don't know if this will match, but this could also be kind of cool. I mean, this is the Milky Way. Um, so that's why I Ooh, thought about writing. Cool. You were doing the, like, this, the space, as you called her, the space babe. Like, you could maybe do a space babe moving thing. Yeah, well, it'd be cool to have, like, a, what we were working on yesterday was, um... Henny Al, you're right. El Illustrador. Welcome. Good to have you here in... Noah wishes you an a happy early birthday. Oh, thank you. Is any, anyone else a May 11th baby? Every uh, seven years it's on Mother's Day. This year it's on a Friday, but I will be alone. Cause I'm, oh. uh, no, but I'm gonna be doing uh, teaching a photography workshop. So like, I'm you're getting just, paid to you, do something you are, I love. You're just, you are just a fascinating individual. I love how you're a good combo of like constantly like learning stuff. Cause you're literally like, you're taking classes and then turn around and you're giving classes. You're like learning and then teaching. Yeah, like well, so for me, my biggest thing is, my biggest like, not that I do New Year's resolutions, but my biggest resolution the past year or two has been to try to be more open about my process and to contribute to the open pool of learning that helped me get to where I'm at so that the next person can start d doing the same thing. It's just this cycle of life where now that I've gained so much information from all these tutorials I had access to, I wanna be able to show people what I've learned so that they can take that, mm -hmm. start making their own interpretations of it, and then they also maybe start contributing. Yeah. Because the bigger the pool is, the better everyone's gonna get at Photoshop, and the more uh, you'll start to see style change in these like art trends and stuff. That's cool. You know? You know, and I think so, some people are afraid to give away their techniques. Yeah, like some I people think that would be like, oh, I'm not going to show you how I made that. No, I think it's n narcissistic and naive to think that you can really own a concept. Because there's billions of people on Earth, and for sure someone else has also had the same idea. It would be and, crazy and for me to be like, you know a little better, what? let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's crazy. I have this big... Um, I use Evernote, I used to use Notepad, and I have these huge lists of ideas, and it's always funny, because I need to be more uh, strict about actually getting them done, because if I don't do them, someone else will. It yeah. always happens. Um, so yeah, this was, uh, it's just loading right now, but this is what we worked on yesterday, and this was just really using blending modes and playing with stars. So we could also, instead of having a still image here, um, we could, um, use an image of that we found these uh, women underwater with gowns oh, on. Oh wow! And we could also use that with this effect. So there's so yeah, many really. weird things you can do with the the timeline tool. It's hard to do them all in one day. <laughs> so let's just do a. Uh, I downloaded those images. I don't know if you see. Uh, if any of you, if you're like, you have an image that you know matches, like, link it in the chat. Because, uh, you know, we're a team. That's not mm -hmm. too bad, though. I mean, it's not the same, but it's the color, the color That's gradients, or not color gradients, but the color palette is, it's in the same zone. Like, this, this would be crazy to try to mush with this 
this piece. Um, so I'm gonna set this layer below. It's pretty close, so oh, I think uh, the only thing that's gonna be awkward now that I'm thinking about this is I should have looked for a video because this guy is moving. Uh. <laughs> so this might actually be more challenging than I anticipated, but we'll see. <laughs> Were you thinking about putting like an underwater woman in this? Um, I don't know. I was thinking about seeing if I could make this into a really cool reflection because I like doing them with natural landscapes. This is like how crazy fast these are, guys. Like, boom, uh, I'm ready to do the reflection. Like, that was 15 mm -hmm. seconds. So you guys mm -hmm. should definitely practice. Put an, an image in. I like to use landscape imagery. I'm sure that this can be used in all sorts of all sorts of ways, um, and just start flipping and clipping. Flip it, I think, flip I think, it and clip it. Flip it and flip, clip, it, clip it. it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks like for uh, bearing with us. <laughs> so, nah, for some reason I've been really into the circles, so. Ugh, I wish it would stop defaulting on this ugly gradient. I don't know. It's because the last thing I saved, the last save touch point I had, I have that? that gradient set up for some uh, reason, so it's just... And if you think back, you're like, I don't think I've ever used this gradient. No. No. So I'm going to just bring both layers with me. I like to just transform it. We're flipping it, and we're clipping it. I feel like there should be like a snap. Oh, this looks like actually really cool. This motion. isn't what I wanted to do, but it... That does look this really looks cool. like now, because of the stars, it looks kind of like an orb. I got really into orbs. I don't know if you guys remember that Instagram trend. Like, uh, I don't know if I can even find it way back in the day. I was so into those. <laughs> For shame. The orbs? We're going into the depths. Oh, yeah. There we go. You can see I you know, reflect it. You can also like do weird oh, stuff yeah. on people's heads. Um, I was like breaking images apart, way more crazy than this. Some of these were videos. I don't know if I have those. I don't know if that's when Instagram had video capabilities, but. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, I'm, yeah. Um, Cause all that stuff has like changed so much. Sometimes I just did like just a plain color. I wouldn't even reflect something in it. Oh. Um, what else have we got here? Where are the orbs? I wonder if I deleted them. Sometimes I would uh, deer interrupted, like girl um. interrupted, that was my joke. Deer interrupted. Um, I can see, after you explained your thesis, I can kind of see. Like they're all over the place. The fragmentation of the self is alive and well in this feed. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, excuse my emo-ness. So I don't know, we're going way back. But, but I was really into orbs before I was into reflections, so. Oh yeah, there's some videos in here. See, I was using the Photoshop timeline panel to do reflections. Back when you still had these really weird, uh, fo like when Instagram, I guess they still allow filters. Do you guys use Instagram? Um, oh, flipping and clipping is kind of like Legally Blonde. Yeah. This one was really cool, because it's like so many. It's just clipping mask on clipping mask on clipping mask on clipping mask on clipping yeah, mask. Yeah, I think Ryan calls it, is that like inception, uh, kind of like, I've heard oh, the word go. inception a couple times. So for some reason, this effect is the same thing where I'm actually just clipping this background and rotating it, but it makes it look like 3D objects. I actually still yeah, like this one, does. but I was really into triangles uh, as if anyone, like anyone who knows me, I have all these like horrible tattoos I got at, during this phase of my life. Um, like I've got like two triangles here, I've got like a whole bunch of triangles. <laughs> I don't know what. So Especially you my triangle even... phase is over. <laughs> Those are almost even like, you know, yourself. Oh, here we go. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the deal what is. What were but you thinking? I was really into orbs uh, for a little while here. There's a lot of circles. Anyways, so I always like to look back at my old stuff and make fun of myself. But and this Andrea is like. says it's cool, no way. This, this is the vibe. But um, even as you flipped that, it looked spherical, like a. Yeah. Like a 3D object. And so this, I'm just going to like give myself like, you know, just kind of erase it from this mountain. We don't need to do it. Like it, it can look like it's a little bit off center. It doesn't, you know, there are no rules when we're uh, making it up as we go. And then this is already kind of cool. So I'm gonna play this cause maybe this is one of the cases where a reflection isn't necessary. Cause this looks kind of like a looming planet. Oop. What? I see what I did here. Oh, I know, I yeah. Do you guys, you guys see what I did here? I did not 
extend my shape layers to my timeline. There we go. It's too busy making fun of myself. Boom. All right, let's see what this, this is actually like, I'm digging it. It does, to me it looks like this, this planet that's somewhere in the background and maybe I would even make the shape move a little bit with like a transform. Mm. I like that I have to, I also do do this alone when I'm like trying to figure out how I, how I am doing something, I'll actually like wiggle. Oh. When I'm like trying to, I'm like a really weird, I spent too much time alone as a freelancer. You're, you're wiggling, talking to yourself. Like yeah, like what? this is, I am talking to myself all the time. Um, so I like. Because this camera hasn't been on. Just, you know, this <laughs> I'm actually night. alone. Like, this is like, <laughs> no, I, yeah. it's all in my head. Um, so this looks kind of cool, but I want to see what it looks like. I really like it. Um, with the, ooh, even adding that in, I didn't realize that was turned off. What it looks like with the mountain in it. Um, I would have like maybe, I think I would like this better if I had a different mountain from like, or a more zoomed in cut, so it's not exactly the same. But this, this is actually kind of cool. And that's footage inside the sphere now? Yeah, so that's why my computer's like, I yeah, can't do like, this, help. <laughs> so that's like, that's kind of cool. I'm not, I like, yeah, I like it more subtle, so I actually like the, the Orby. I like the, the Orby. Orby one better than this, but um, the Orby one. This also could be interesting where now I'm really into the idea because of our cowboy um, to use motion, motion, motion. So it's like you're using a video background, you're clipping it into a video, and everything being clipped is in motion. Yeah. Um, so yeah. You, could, uh, you like that? Tr Transgreaser FTM. I don't know if that's your real name. Uh, I think it's super cool. Or like here, this is a good one because it's kind of a wider, a wider shot. Are mm. you guys, uh, are you guys getting into this? Like, yeah, let us think, know um, if you dig this or have other ideas. I, somebody does like they, uh, Ryan does say rotate the sphere. You did that. You kind of like what are you guys? For me, I like this. I, li I like this the best. But okay. like I'm like a, I'm like a hyper minimalist as of late. So. Um, I find myself adding a lot to it. And I would want the stars to be moving though, maybe. Like the, the, Ooh, instead of doing can... an image, I would have, I should have licensed a video. Okay. I guess you could move, you could move that layer inside of it. Which layer? Uh, that's just a photo, right? Yeah. You could just like slowly move it. Oh, I could. So like, like something. A, let's fake it till we make it. So yeah. I'm using, I have a still image. Or swirl it. That might be or a good even idea, like Ryan. expand it. That's what we were trying to do yesterday. Is these like that would um, be cool. Um, it gets a little funky because I would want it looping. So this is where we get into like a tricky. It's gonna look really slow if I put a keyframe here and a keyframe here because this video is like thirty seconds long. Yeah. So what I need to do is either cut this down and make my loop and then repeat the layer over and over again. Or just let it be, let it just like loop. Let's just look first. Yeah, Ooh, I'd let slow it slow I wouldn't worry about tightening up the first and last frame. And then I guess I'm gonna expand it. Image. I want it expanding from the center of this circle, sort of. Good. I think we're all on the same page. People are saying. Image. Edit. So I like to do it by hand, right? But right now I want it, I don't want to move the center point right now, so I'm actually going to do it more like a robot would. And I'm going to type it in myself. I do this a lot in After Effects because you have to make sure that your math makes sense. Otherwise things look weird. Oh, shoot, are we, are we stalling out? Add another keyframe. I don't think it needs to be there. We'll add, come here, little buddy. Yeah, you got it, Ryan. We are, we're basically tweening the star layer. And we're rotating it, Bruno. Uh, and Pablo, great, great, uh, great thought, you know, also using After Effects. But again, we're just kind of getting. Yeah, I just wanted to show people, like, so I do almost all of my um, 
motion work and After Effects now, but it's kind of an intimidating program to start right off the bat. So I think just some of these kind of teach you some foundations of how vid video editing could work. And then once you get a little bit more comfortable, you can pop into After Effects. But there are a few things that I actually prefer Photoshop for. So like I actually prefer Photoshop for, because um, masking in Photoshop is, I can get a lot more detailed with it. And I, I think for this one, the way I set this file up, it was actually easier to do in Photoshop. And I understand now with the wiggle expression that I wouldn't have had to do as much work by hand if I was in After Effects. Um, but uh, I liked my Photoshop process for this one. So this actually is all Photoshop. There's no, it's just you make the image three times. You're gonna make uh, obviously nothing lit because neon is a, when the gas is going through the tubes, it always has that kind of like vibration, like the tension. And then you're gonna have it fully lit and then one, whatever you're turning off. So the off layer, and then you're just toggling between the three, like, which is pretty crazy. It's mm -hmm. also surprisingly easy. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things, this is why I'm like, you can do such crazy stuff with these really simple concepts. And I think that's what's really exciting about Photoshop. But you're also like really paying attention to the detail, that little flicker. Before yeah, it goes on. I mean, it's so like, for me, I'm trying to get power to it, and now I'm like on. the best way to when you're making your pieces is actually do some studies. Like, so I either walked around and I looked at what neon signs were like, and I like observed them before I did my process, and I also Googled neon sign GIF so I could actually see the timing. Okay. Because I can pull GIFs into Photoshop, and I can. I was trying to see the cadence of like how people like, like flicker off. I make a lot yeah. of sound effects also. <laughs> um, Makes sense. So like, I don't know. And, and then I like to make things for real, so I actually took a neon class. Um, you would. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I mean, anyone, in a good way. I tried to do <laughs> yeah, a, a an Instagram class? live story when I was doing the glass blowing and I got a little cocky and then like, I wasn't paying attention because I was looking at all these people being like, oh my God, that's so cool. And I like blew up. Like one of my, oh. I like blew the glass too hard oh. and it just shattered. And I was like, ah, and like <laughs> shut my camera down. You caught, that on, you caught that on film then. Yeah, well, funny. I caught it was a live story. So hopefully nobody. Uh... Oh, that's funny. So yeah, so the stars are moving a little bit now. It's still kind of loading. I wonder if it'll go quicker once I've let it pass one more time. It's really subtle though. I should have moved it more. Uh, if that is. Come on, little buddy. What we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna delete this keyframe. I'm gonna make another one really quickly. Come on. It's way bigger. We're going. We're going for a wow factor here. And then what I'm gonna do, cause this is lagging and I just wanna see what it looks like, is I'm actually, I also like to freehand crop. I don't care for uh, people telling me what dimensions my things need to be. I don't know if you want So uh, that's kind of a square. Uh, image, crop. File. And then what we're going to do is I just want to see sort of, I'm going to render this video really quickly because I want to see, yeah, it's not exactly a square. Oh, yeah. Another one of my naming conventions I'm never going to remember. What did you name it? So I actually, you know, you can make a living from photo manipulation. I mean, I get commissioned from time to time to do... I've done a big event posters. I did the Adobe Max um, identity for 2016. Um, I've done a lot of stuff recently with uh, promos for uh, motion films. Or Jesus, what did I say like that? Movies. <laughs> motion <laughs> films. Um, <laughs> uh, 
So no there way. are there are places where this works. Um, I did just get another job though. I have another career as a UX UI designer. So I don't. I have an analytical brain, and it, I thought that I would love doing Wichoria full time. But then the analytical part of my brain was miserable. So mm. now I'm going back into into the other the other side. Yeah, you're, you're, that's awesome. It makes me sick. And again, like you, you do something else full time. Even though you did this full time for a bit, you're just like constantly like kind of changing and evolving, and probably kind of discovering more about yourself as you go along. Because again, like you said, you tried it full time and kind of took the fun out of it a little bit. Yeah. What happened for me was as soon as you take something that you used to just do for the hell of it, and then it caught attention, and sometimes like I like making money. But like I like when the money is a surprise. I don't like when um, I'm pursuing it for money because then it corrupts it. Mm -hmm. So, because then it felt like I was just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll like do anything for this money. Yeah. And I also overdo it, so I go way out of like the budget I should have scoped. Like mm -hmm. I did a thing for Dior, and it took me like 40 hours to edit this this video. While this is exporting, I can show you guys. Um, this is an idea I've had in my head for like f three or four years, and I had originally, I actually, if Non is in the chat, Non helped me, I got those banner letters, like the happy birthday, happy anniversary, and I wrote, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, and we got to fool me like 100 times, and it was a whole wall in my studio, hmm. and I thought I was gonna use that, and then I realized, it just didn't look the way I had imagined, even though I did all that work. So instead, I did it like this. This kind of like, what is it, like Jenny Holzer LED scrolly kind of effect. Mm -hmm. um, and I did this in After Effects. I started it in Photoshop, and then I was like, wait a second. And mm -hmm. my friend Dustin, who's an After Effects master, uh, helped me. He That's like looked perfect. at how I originally built it, and then tore it apart, and we rebuilt it together with a correct way of doing it. Mm. So I learned a lot from that process. So this is taking a second. Uh, and what are, uh, how much time do we have before we're doing our portfolio review? Soon. I don't know if you guys know this, but we're doing a portfolio review today. And you should submit your portfolios. Yeah, you have 22 minutes to do so. Just make sure you have everything like filled in. We'd love to see the about section to get to know you, kind of where you're at in your career. Maybe you're just out of school. We're not gonna piss, pick the best portfolios or anything like that. It kind of runs the gamut, but it will be related kind of like to your works or more Photoshop, photo intensive stuff. Ew, what are my favorite motion the films? Oh, I got this question last time. I think actually maybe it was when I was hosting instead because it was a really your hard question motion to answer. Films. Uh, I really all, I love awesomely bad movies. So I've actually been hitting the Nicolas Cage pretty hard recently. Really? What was the, the most recent one? It was when he's in Vegas. There's uh, another one where uh, you can preview time and he's trying to stop an atomic bomb from going off. Next. Next was really good. <laughs> um, and then there was another one I watched recently where he uh, he was at a boxing match and then he uncovers this like crazy conspiracy by the government to like cover up some missiles. Oh, really? Yeah. He would. So, he's, always, he's always saving the day. I know. I, I like it. to imagine that someday, because I also used to watch a lot of Criminal Minds, that maybe the FBI will bring me into a case one time because there's just someone's murdering people and the only clues that are left behind are Photoshop files. Oh. Yeah. And I then like I come it. in and I save the day and then I become part of the team. Ah, nice. Yeah. You're like forensic <laughs> uh, Photoshop files. Yeah. Sort of deal. You guys awesome. did, um, you guys did like a, a Photoshop mystery thing. You do like one a year, I think, though. I've never actually participated in time to like find the clues, but uh -huh. that's like a crazy fun. Yeah, it would be fun. So it would be like, maybe it is something like this, that there's a clue in this file, but you'd have to open up, you go to window timeline, and you'd have to scrub down, and that's where a phrase is. Yeah. That would be awesome. And then that'll lead you to, like maybe it's a URL, it goes, it goes someplace Sorry, else. this is taking so long, guys. Oh, I did want to show you something, because we kind of okay, ran let's, in. Okay, let's, uh, let's toggle over to, to your screen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just kind of give you a rundown of kind of what you were, what we were dealing with the other day. Say, for instance, I like, I like this video, and you'll save a preview, right? And we'll just do uh, this HD version. 
I'm saving that preview to my miscellaneous folder. And so when you go to your library you're saving it to, like these might be grayed out. So again, you know, great for After Effects, you know, Premiere Pro, not so great for Photoshop. Right? Yeah, I've just been downloading them to my, they, the photos will auto sync. So yesterday I practiced with a stock image that I dragged in through that panel. And then when I decided to license it, I clicked one button and it just automatically replaced in my file. Okay. Which was super cool. Yeah. But I was just gonna show like there is a way to actually you can go and like all these all these files in your libraries panel actually exist out in the browser too. Oh, okay. Oh look, we're we're ready. She's baked. Oh, is it? So yeah, let's go back. I don't need to loop this because I didn't make it a perfect loop, but all right, so this is where we can actually see it in sort of a real a real time. So we made it look like the stars are moving by just um, making a two transform keyframes. And the first one is the starting point, And the last one, I just actually enlarged the image. Mm -hmm. And so if we wanted this to loop, what I would actually do is instead of dealing with all my files, I would actually just drag this in just for the sake of this right now. So to make it a looping cinema graph. What we need to do is first, I don't know, cut this in half. And then I need this on two different layers. So I'm actually gonna drag this layer out. And so what I wanna do is I need to to stick this, this middle part as the front part, and then the front part as the middle part, if that, if that makes sense. And then usually there's a little crossover. And so this is where I would keyframe. Let's see if I'm remembering this correctly. Opacity. And then opacity zero. Which I just do over here. Oh yeah. Uh, honeymoon in Vegas. There was leaving Las Vegas. That was the Nicolas Cage. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that it? No, but that's not the one I watched the other day. I don't remember what it was called. Was uh, Reverb Mike says it's the where he Amazon dresses up like Elvis? Amazon has a lot of them. He wasn't dressed like Elvis in this one. In this one, his best friend, who's a military commander, betrays him. Hmm. Yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. In case you haven't seen it. Seen it. All right, so this is a perfect loop. Did you guys uh, catch any jumping? Snake eyes? Unless I wasn't paying attention in the middle. I'm going to laugh if it's not. This should be how you do it, though. You split. I was trying to do like a yeah. split it and clip it. Split <laughs> no, it and clip you it. split it, and then you put the and middle to the front, and then the front to the middle. And then and it just loops over and over and over again. And so this is nice because I guess the stars, it doesn't look too funky with how it's fading into itself. Yeah. Um, it can get a little weird with, uh, like, if with water, if you're jumping, the waves will kind of, like, you can see it melting a little bit. Like, yeah. I can see, I can tell sometimes when someone's on a cinema graph. But for the most part, this yeah. one you can't tell because the stars are easy to easy to do. Right, looks so. Good. Looks seamless. Matt, Matt we agrees. We did a cinema graph, guys. Matt approves. So, yeah, it's a, it's a fun little trick, and if you guys, uh, you can also just Google it, like how to make a cinema graph, and there's lots of tutorials covering how to do it in Photoshop, how to do it in After Effects, mm -hmm. but essentially it's just cutting your video in half and then just rearranging the parts and having this little bit of crossover with um, having the opacity change. Yeah, that's, and you explained it really well. By the way, yeah, thank it's, you. It's a concept. It's a. It's I a mean, we could have done it. So I did it just with my MP4 because I didn't feel like it gets a little crazy if we're gonna try to do that with this because you'd have to literally duplicate all these layers and then split all these layers and then rearrange all these layers. Yeah. So in this situation, I'd rather just work One. with my exported file and just do like this is a much easier. Like I'll know if I've screwed something up because there's only two options. Yeah. But here there'd be like 50. Oh man. So you could do this with anything so again in that, you know, you're gonna use the woman like underwater, you know. How would you do that? Same I mean it would way. be even crazier. I mean we can you even try to add someone it. in right now. Let's uh let's see, we're in a woman underwater gown. Let's see if that's a 
Oh wait, we're in, get out of here, images. We're making stuff move today. Oh, yeah, this wow. chick is awesome. So what I wanna do is, I actually, there was a different one I like from this, so I'm gonna go more from the series, see more. Oh, some mermaids. Mermaids she for holding mermaid. like a bottle of something? Get out of here with that. I know what you'd do. I like this one. Okay. Save preview to computer. I don't because I haven't actually tested this, I'm gonna save the preview and then if I like it, I'm gonna license it. Yeah. Um so like just like this this other background, I'll show you how easy it is to license um license and replace that image. But it's nice. I like to test it before I spend my money. So Let's see what we got here. So did you see what I just did there? This is getting kind of crazy, guys. So That's all fun. I did is, uh, this model is for the most part on a black background. And when you use things like Lighten or Screen in your blending modes, it's gonna make all the blacks translucent. So it's essentially doing all the masking for you. And so that's why I like to make the space babes. Because mm -hmm. it's doing all the work. <laughs> like I don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. So like, this is pretty sick. This is pretty what? sick. Um, <laughs> and then, so this is actually shorter. Ooh, so you know what I'm gonna do? Do, 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 do. Make it match. Another thing you could do is like, what if you put a galaxy, turned her into a galaxy? Like yeah. you put a galaxy layer on top of her like, with a layer whoa. mode. I also do surprises like that. I'm a weirdo. All right, so first I want to see generally like, wow, this is kind of sick. Oh, a Death Star would be good, but you know what happens is, uh, what's his face would probably sue me if I tried to put a Death Star in this George time. Lucas. Yeah, doesn't he like go after kids in schools? Like they're like, I want to watch Star Wars, and he sends like cease and desist to like to elementary kids schools that are like duplicating, sharing files, huh? All right, we've got we've got a frame that I think did the frame. Did something happen here? Hey, something. Robzilla in the house. Good to see you, man. He says hello. Hello. Oh yeah, that's true, Andrea. He doesn't own it anymore. Disney owns it. Oh well, I'm sure Disney was also money hungry. Mm -hmm. So please don't come after me. I don't know why my. I guess I I bet in my export my background wasn't complete. So if I do this, and I do this, here we go. Okay. So I like her, but you're right. Like, I don't know if maybe I actually want her. Maybe I should have put her in the clipping mask. So I'm actually gonna go back to my file. And do this all over again, because I was doing it on my other export. I'm gonna just flip it right off the bat, because I know that's how I want it. How did you find her? What was it, like underwater? Underwater woman gown. I think I just did underwater photography. Um, I also get to do that um, next week, which I've never done before. So I get to like actually go and shoot in a pool. Um, so that'll be really fun. Next week is me learning all these new photo techniques so that I can apply them to my weird photoshops and then teach you guys mm. how to do the photoshops with them. I love it. Um, which I think is fun. And then I'm actually also teaching a class. So it's like a little bit of both, but yeah, that's awesome. you know, I'm a nerd, so. So this is, this file is gonna hate me now because I have so many videos in it, but this computer's kind of on her, uh, on her last legs. <laughs> we, we can hear the fan. The, uh, the warranty yeah. is up in one month, so maybe I'll get lucky and it'll blow up right now and then they'll <laughs> have to give me a new one. <laughs> uh. So I'm gonna go to lighten. I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm just gonna erase a little bit with a soft brush because there's this weird, uh, beam of light that's coming down. You can see it in some of the other versions of this, like this. If I download this preview, um, and I actually, I'm gonna do it on the the other one, just so that it doesn't take forever to load. Um, come here. Oh. You gotta pay attention to where your files, I need to be more, uh, 
resolute, is that the term, about making sure that I scrub all the way to the beginning before I know. plugging I, these I've, in? I've, I've, always, I've made that mistake. Um, lighten. Enough. Yes, Juan, it does sound like you do a, fun, a lot of fun projects. Yeah, you know, it's been, it was a little slow for a while. I, uh, I haven't been as active as I should be, but sometimes you just have to take breaks and then you start to get into, into the vibe again. So for me, I have this crazy Instagram following and I think it just, I needed a break from that many people having opinions about everything I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm getting back into like getting excited about um, making new stuff. Like even in these streams, I've accidentally come up with the, a couple ideas for new series. So, so what I like to do is I'll do things over and over again, but they start to change over time. So if you look at the first geometric reflections, they don't look like the ones I'm doing now because mm -hmm. the technique just keeps subtly changing. Um, and I like that. I mean, that's kind of my weird process of, and sometimes the series get mushed together. So you see what I mean? So I, I put a lighten mode on, but now there's a lot of this, like the dust didn't get masked out because it's lighter than the background. Yeah. But it almost kind of looks like a galaxy. Mm -hmm. So what we could do, bear with me here. Looks like a, like a Greek, like a Greek goddess. Kinda. If we go to stars, or actually maybe galaxy. Honestly, uh, if you on a Reddit, I'm actually all of my karma is from Nicolas Cage photoshops, oh. where I Photoshop Nicolas Cage's face into places they don't belong. Is One true god, Reddit. I don't know if you guys are Reddit nerds, but I love Reddit, and I hate Reddit sometimes, but for the most part, I love it. Yeah. So I think, let's think about putting in, hmm. Wow, this is a lot of, a lot of these are not time lapses. Ooh, this is kind of crazy looking. I'm gonna just practice with this one. Do I have maybe a galaxy? I'll give myself two options. So you guys, do you think you're, uh, you'll be able to, to do these things? Look, the, the reflections and the, Cinemagraphs, what else did we do today? Space babes, we're mushing them all together. Now it's a space babe reflection cinemagraph. <laughs> Reflectomagraph. <laughs> the crazy thing though is if I want it to seamlessly loop, looping her is gonna be a pain. That's, um, you'd have to do so after effects. No, I think we could technically do it here, but I'm gonna have to find like a really perfect part where it's barely moving and just have it so it like seems like she's doing this, like almost like a boomerang. Oh. It wouldn't be the same as like cutting a, yeah. an image in half. Typically, I mean, I guess what I do in this case is like After Effects and then do a time reverse, reverse keyframes. Yeah. So flip the motion. Yeah, I don't actually. So she would go out and then she'd go back in and that would be the loop. So what I'm Hey, gonna... Freddie, good to have you here. Hello, Juan. I wanted um, to just, oh, this one's kind of cool too. Save preview, give myself some options, you know? Is this even moving? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the interesting thing is about those. They're like. I'm trying to find one that has a lot of the black background so I don't have to mask anything. Because <laughs> uh, I'm being lazy. Yeah. I'm embracing it. It's, it's Thursday, Friday. That's right. All right, it so let's try this. I wanted to see if I can actually make that cloud look like a, like a space cloud. So I'm actually just gonna like multiply, clip, clipping mass just into this. I'm gonna do soft light maybe. So now it's got like the colors are a little bit different. Maybe I'll make, I kind of like her red hair, but maybe we'll, uh, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer for black and white. And then I'm also gonna clip that. Because what that's going to do is it's not going to make the whole image black and white. It's only going to make the girl. And I'm going to set it below my um, space video. So now she's only being colored by the colors in this um, Adobe stock video I just downloaded. And there's like blending modes are just so crazy to that me. That's awesome. Um, where it just becomes so much more subtle. I'm gonna buy her because this Adobe, now I can't see anything because of the Adobe stock. So I'm gonna, I'm digging this. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use that image for sure. 
to purchase it. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to get uh, what creative direction on logo design, we are doing portfolio reviews. Less than five minutes, we'll get that started. Portfolio reviews all day today. So we can't review a. I wish we. Could oh wait, we only have five everybody. minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, I guess then I'm not gonna like worry about it right now. No, actually, I am gonna worry about it. <laughs> I Do feel it. like it's gonna Sing take. Because I, I feel like you're gonna go like in the lobby and continue to work on this or something. <laughs> I am. I mean, the weird thing for me right now is trying to figure out um, like what blending mode I like best. Um. So yeah. So for one other thing is I liked her red hair. So I don't remember what was my blending mode before. I think it was pin light. Color dodge? No, not color dodge. Ugh. Maybe soft light. I don't know. I sometimes like I know. Definitely goddess. not. Try sometimes over, like I, like I hate to say it. Sometimes I am like, hmm, I wonder what this is gonna look like. I'm really familiar with these ones, but every once in a while. Usually overlay is also a, a nice one, although it's a little bit harsh. I don't want everything black and white though. I was kind of digging her red hair. So I'm gonna just like maybe with a like a flow of 2%, I'm gonna like allow some of her, the color of the original film. So maybe it looks like the, the galaxy has like some variety and that's kind of cool. And then I downloaded another one. So this one's even crazier. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to do a clipping mask. I need to do a blending mode. I guess I liked overlay a bit last time. Ooh, this is getting a little crazy. Maybe lighten. Oh, no, because she that doesn't work. That makes sense. Maybe I need to control this a little bit more. I think in this case I would isolate, I would rotoscope her and clip it in. But I like the colors in this a lot. Yeah, I do too. That looks good. It's fun that you're just using Photoshop techniques and again, just, you know, using them rather on a still image, it's you using a videos. Oops. Oh, I've got my- Thank you, Kat. Stakes is nice information today for Photoshop. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Oh yeah. Thanks for joining us. Be sad if it was like one viewer online. <laughs> and it's Gus. <laughs> Nobody likes me. It's like um, it's like your mom. You know what else your I want to play watching. with? We put this. I saw you on the YouTube. I kind of like God, this this underwater like it's just so pretty. Yeah. It looks like a Renaissance painting. It totally does. But I wanted to see what this looked like. I'm jumping all over the place, guys. This is actually how I design. So I'll have like eight, that's what I like. eight Photoshop files open and I'll be like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I can't make up my mind. I love, uh, it's fun hanging out with you. Cause like you don't, uh, we so don't know yeah. where it's going and you don't know where it's going. <laughs> so it's like exciting. So you know? like, check this out. This is her like in the mm. reflection. So now maybe there's, Interesting. There's something to that. I don't know what it is yet, but there's something. Like and then again, saving. maybe using that, um, this file is gonna hate me, but <laughs> let's bring another video back <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, see, yes. I did it again. I didn't scrub. Oh yeah. Uh. It's like the opposite oh, of cool. that Destiny's Child song. Oh, I, I mean, want good movement. the scrub. <laughs> I want it to only go into these. And all day today, just so you know, we'll have Nathaniel Dodson up next. Again, he's kind of a different take. He will uh, definitely tackle um, kind of more tutorial style. Linear light's probably really weird looking. Shauna Lynn's gonna do wow, some lettering. kind of crazy. It's Infographics later as well. All right, Paul, welcome. Another Paul from Nairobi. Good to have you here. And again, Victoria's teaching you Photoshop magic. It's like you thought you just worked with still images. Turns out you know a little video too. Yeah, it's, it's always surprising to me. Tool. I mean, it's so crazy what the capabilities of Photoshop are. 
like the fact that this timeline panel, like for a while, I don't think I really started using it a lot until I caught it like two or three years ago. Um, oh yeah. And it's every, you know, it keeps getting better every update, so. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to s switch to a different tool, which is nice. And eventually you will end up in After Effects, but again, this is just, you know, your, your gateway drug. Oh, I like lighting better than screen. Looks like our timer's up. All right, well I hope. Uh, we'll cut back to this, because chances are, if you're still tweaking this, but we'd love to get your take on these portfolios we have. Yeah, no, so let's, let's get into that. Um, and even like if you guys, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but I'll probably post some stories of the final, of the process and the final, so you guys can get a recap. You are really good on social media. Like follow Witchoria on Instagram. I do have a short attention stories. span. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all the weird stuff happens, because I'll just like forget about something and look at it later and be like, ooh, actually, it's nice to take a break and reapproach it. Yeah, well, that is good. Oh, super fun. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and dive into. Portfolio Reviews. Welcome. We're now in space. Can you hear me? Is this thing, is the air breathable? We are still in the spaceship. There we go. Hey, everybody. <gasps> hey, Victoria. We've landed now on we a are. planet we, that has oxygen. <laughs> it's amazing. My head is way too big for this. Yes. This is yeah, what I'm going to do every time I'm too scared to say something. I'll just. <laughs> or if you just, if you don't want to talk to somebody, you just like, like they can't see you. <sighs> well, welcome. We're now in our fancy spaceship. We'll what take a this journey. Off. What a journey. It's been wonderful. We traveled through space, through your Photoshop file, yeah. which was very space related. We're in this spaceship now, and uh, we needed uh, sort of an elevated view to take a look at these awesome portfolios. So we have two we're going to review, and our first one happens to be Lefty. Lefty Kazdag. Maybe can I get this? Uh, maybe I should look. My glasses aren't going to let me see anything in detail. Oh, you can look in, over my shoulder if you want to. Okay. Let's share. All right, congratulations, Lefty. Hopefully Lefty's here. Uh, we can review your portfolio. And again, you don't have to, we're not picking out the best ones. We're just picking out uh, some that hopefully might be related to what you're doing. Looks like we already have some light <clears throat> type portfolios, but let's kind of take this one by one. Okay, Grease, what's up? Le Lefty, if you're here, just chime in and chat. So. Um, all right, let's see. I usually kind of... So I also like to like sneak in. I mean, so for my process, when I'm stalking people on Behance, I immediately click Instagram, oh. Twitter. I like to get a real vibe of people. So I'm yeah. like a thorough stalker. And um, thanks, thanks for hooking these up too, by uh, the way. Uh, hey, Lefty. I, I think you actually could put in more information, like a, a paragraph Yeah, a bio, bio. would be would be pretty sick. There's some good starter templates if you've never done one before, like artist statement bio that you can Google and kind of look at the gist. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, mine's not even like, I need to improve on mine, but it generally is like a one paragraph statement that like says uh, sort of what you're into, um, mm -hmm. the type of work you do, maybe where you're based, um, maybe where you went to college. Any, yeah. uh, I like to mention the features I've had in like Huffington Post and 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 don't be afraid to ask for what you want. You could be like, hey, you know what? I'm 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 in college doing art school, and I'm interested in freelance work. So right, contact so let's me. See. The fine art of flight. I'm into the naming convention. So we'll we'll pick ten points. We'll pick a couple of these. Oh, these are beautiful images. Those are beautiful. I also like the way. So you did take the time because the default background is not black. So you're actually. Um, designing out the way these look. And I, I think that putting these images on a black background makes them so much more powerful than if they were just laid out on a white background. Um, it really changes the perception of a black and white photography. So big ups to that. Um, Jesus, what is the shutter speed that you were shooting these on? Do you have it here? Oh, wow. Nice. Adds the apps. That this is just were the textures used. are really beautiful too. Did you add 
noise and post, or um, is that just like was your ISO cranked up a little bit? Because it has a film grain quality that I really like. Um, it's not in all of them though, so maybe this is a more of like a, a cropped in image. I love the layout though. I think you did a good job. And the the way you've paired these images, like the curvature, um, this is really nice. Mm -hmm. I feel like you. I can tell that you took time thinking about your layout and how you wanted these pictures to live together, and it really helps bring the the series together. Where like. I don't think it would have been as powerful if I had just seen this for the first time as like one image on Instagram, but seeing it yeah. um, in this layout. Um, I think for me, the only one, this one is not as cohesive as like this is, I don't want to like, I, I mm -hmm. use the word like this is a banger <laughs> too much, <laughs> but like this is excellent. Yeah. Like a, um, really just picking these images that really just look super cool together. Oh my god, helicopters scare me so much. Oh, and this is this Ooh, is a sweet texture. Cool. This is I'm a texture you... that I would use in Photoshop for oh. sure. <laughs> I'm glad you uh yeah, I mean this is fascinating. Some people might crop it right here. So but... is that is that water? What is that? Is it smoke? I think it's smoke. Or an air show. Is my so guess. let me read this, because I got distracted by your pretty photos, because that's exactly what happens. The fine art of flight. As a media operations member... Yeah, so I think maybe in the beginning a little bit more background, maybe about the experience. Um, just bringing it to life a little bit, because when I look at these, I get that... Um, like, I feel like I can hear them. You know what I mean? Um, I think there's like a poetic way of getting into this, especially with the way it's laid out, because there's this duality in most of the slides. Um, is that a missile? Uh, it's like, that it has to be a flare for a show. Ah, these are so close together. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, they're doing a tango. Oh, this is really oh, cool, wow. too. Maybe this one should go up near the top. Like instead of down here, it belongs as this one. Or maybe no, maybe, I can't tell if that would be just too dark. Too dark, yeah. Or maybe it's like the perfect like interruption. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm really digging that. This is the next thing I'm immediately attracted to. I also like to do kind of blunt uh, titles for mine, um, where it's like cars, light, movement, like yeah, just I look like at it. the images, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. Nice. So this is fun. So um, I'm curious for this technique, was this all freehand or did you use a uh, a tripod? Just my curiosity. Like some of this, the dragging quality is really cool. There are these, when you're doing uh, long exposures, there are these beautiful idiosyncrasies that you can never capture again. Like it's not possible to, to redo the photo. Mm. Um, because they're just these weird nuances where it's how fast the car was going by and what, yeah, what like position your hand was in. And it's just so many weird little elements which make these so magical because they can only exist in this one moment in time. And it's also stretching the perception of time because you're using a long exposure. Mm -hmm. So you're stretching the light, which is symbolically, it's an important thing in my work as I like to think of I don't know, weird weird connections to the outside world. Follow the lights. This reminds me of that. What is that? Like, all of the lights. Bah, 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 bah. Is that a... Like, oh, all yeah. The lights. Is that the he who we do who? not speak of right now? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yes. I'm this exactly is awesome. So I'm about. actually... Uh, I'm excited to learn how to do this. This is fascinating. I don't know. Like, this is this wild is to me. Because, like... This isn't Photoshop, right? This is just Nikon. Is this D just five? Are you twisting the lens during a long exposure? Like, let's reveal that. Maybe this first. should be the top image, though, right? What we is the what is the click value? Now, I think for sure one of these down here. 
Um, like this is, yeah. I don't think I've ever That's seen amazing. something that looks like it this. It looks like a painting. I think this is the more powerful, the, this is the yeah. thumbnail picture. That's your winner, that's your hero image. This is so cool. Oh, that's what it is, trees, I guess. Oh, but you gotta, I have some, I like to keep the, Ooh, the first ones Paco's in. Paco's like, it might be uh, using I feel a like zoom on a long I gotta exposure. click it now that you told me not to do it. Cause I, oh. I am not capable of not clicking it now. This is awesome for a first freelance job. What? Oh, and you got to no. actually put it in print. Did you actually design this? Uh, what what would you call this? Not a lockup or a logo. These uh, I don't know. these are. Am I allowed if to say kick to ass? This? This is, yes, you can. This is this is kick ass. Like. Okay. Great photos. If this is you're like, oh, like, please don't show this to the world. I don't know. Uh, you, what, let me get your resume, what? bud. <laughs> <laughs> Hired. Yeah, this is beautiful. Did you also do, so you did, did you do the photography for, did you, did you do the, is this a photo gig or if, or did you actually design the shirts? Yeah. I guess that's what this could use is kind of more carefully explain what you did and like didn't do or whatever. Let's see. We got... This this one. Oh, this is really pretty film green. What was the picture on this? This also I think needs a different picture because this this alone isn't telling enough of a story. But I'm immediately attracted to these um, color gradients, and I mm. think focusing in and even like hyper cropping in on that, like like way in on one of these would be really really cool. So we have this and one other portfolio we'll, re we'll review. This is beautiful. So I am also Ooh. curious what would, um, I, it's a film project, but it'd be interesting to add some storytelling to, um, so uh, people like things in buckets and categories, and I work a lot in series for that reason, because it kind of like seeing it all together makes it, it just takes it to the next level. So it'd be kind of cool to see sort of a cohesive story with that film project where like each image connects to another image, even if it's not like an over the top one, but it's like uh, like the color scheme maybe leads to the next one. So there mm -hmm. are these subtle shifts in the project. Mm -hmm. um, but you're super talented. Yeah, the Fine Art of Flight had some good cohesiveness to it and grouped pretty well together. Awesome, man, that's fantastic. You're quite talented and are you also, as a photographer. Are you contributing to uh, to these, to 500 pixels and to Unsplash, like, do you donate your images sometimes? Yeah, let us know. Um, Cause that's also super cool. Um, and if that's the case, you know, I feel like everyone should be like. Yeah, you know what? And the nice thing I like about this is like all these pieces are pretty strong. There's nothing that I'd say, oh, take this out. I wanna you see more, saying? actually. You know what, one last thing before we skip over. We're going to your Instagram. So, immediate, oh, this is a really cool connection. I don't Ooh. know if that was on purpose. Um, you gotta like surface some of this. Cause like right it's now, nice. I know that like I only, I try to only put Behance projects that are like a nice chunk. Like Behance isn't for one-offs. It's for groups of projects. Yeah. Like I don't put up just one image. Um, but I think you should, you should fill it up. This is super it's cool. great work. Yeah, like some of this, some of this, oh, yeah, yeah, what's up? <laughs> I'm getting yeah. psyched. This is Good. so cool. You could like it. Yeah. Oh, oh. dang it. <laughs> Anyways. Good, fantastic. You're really Loving talented. You, awesome. you should uh, You should definitely keep, there's definitely something to this though. I really like this. I know that mm -hmm. you don't have to think about the grid, but on Behance or something, connecting these images like this and having, connecting having weird photography together would be really cool. That would be really cool. Um, awesome. All right, moving on. Great work. I just say, and again, just add some information in your about section. But our next person we're diving into is Ryan Doran. Congratulations, Ryan. We are reviewing your portfolio, actually in the neighborhood here. All right. Uh, and actually, let's come down here. So we've got, since 2014, early adopter. Can we click read more, please? So. I will right off the bat say, there's a lot of language in this first statement and it makes it hard to read. Like it's a it's a mouthful. Um, 
so I might simplify it a little bit because I it took me I had to reread it a little bit. Create a visionary that is passionate about contributing exceptional artistic and technical. Um, I use this editor called You're the fancy. Hemingway editor. If you Google it, it'll it scores you. Like if you just Google it right now, Hemingway editor. I use it all the time for stuff now because I have issues sometimes where I'm adding uh, some. I have the same issues sometimes, and you type in your like this is my thing that I am. And what it's gonna do is it analyzes in real time. And if we, hmm. you can't see it, but in this right. in this panel over here, it, it gives you a grade based on like, um, like legibility. So like sentences that are long, um, it like gives an explanation up here, but like the red highlight means it's just like a little oh, bit hard, to, hard read. to read. But I use that sometimes as a tool when I'm wow, making my like bios that. and stuff because people have an attention span of a goldfish. So, oh, let's get let's take a look at this. Let's. No, also so we'll UI pick a, UX. We'll pick a That's couple. We up. only have like ten minutes before we're done with the whole thing. Um, well, you have a lot of work on here. All right. Well, let's yeah. get to the top because the top is super super colorful, and I'm immediately like, this. You had me at hello. You had me um, at impossible. This is super super cool. Is this like a play on? Is this count as isometric design? Impossible cubes. Yeah, this is super so, cool. So Ryan's awesome. Ryan's joined us on the live streams before. So this is super super cool. I almost wonder if you set this like the background instead of white to like one of these pinks, if it would like pop the image a little bit. Hmm. Um, Great I color dig this. Choice. I am curious for, for a little bit more I information about it, but like this is sexy. Yeah. Oh, this is nice too. So is this, I'm trying to figure out, is this paper or are you doing clipping masks with textures and shadows? So Ew. mysterious. Oh, possible design for a new font. Nice, okay, cool. In progress is, uh, I do like in progress snapshots. Did you, uh, how long ago was this? 2018, are you still working January. on the, um, on this typeface? Done in Illustrator. In Illustrator with these textures too. Wow, big ups. Yeah. Good Ooh, job. How do I? How do I get out of here? Oh, uh, you can. Yeah. Mm. I like kind of seeing the evolution of. It, is this? Are these the older projects for the most part down here, and then, or you just put your favorites at the top? I'm curious how you're organizing um, this feed. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really, really powerful one to have in the top left corner. I love because them. it's so colorful, yeah. and having these ones where they're more white background down here, I think, is a smart move. Because like I was immediately pulled into this one because I'm attracted to pretty colors and like shiny objects, I guess. Yeah. So, well, Ryan, your your yeah favorites at the top, and I would say that you could even you can even get rid. You don't have to have everything here. You could definitely get rid of some of this stuff if you want I'm to. You can this. kind of curate it a little bit. Nice. That's sick. So I'm curious, um, I'd love to see some of these with uh, either like some additional crops or um, just a few more pieces, like anytime maybe you do something that is in the same spectrum, um, pairing them together. Like I almost wonder if these could kind of be related somehow. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, ooh, I really like this. The pops of red make it for me. And these, this background mm -hmm. texture. It's very this nice. Is, yeah, this is really interesting work. I think maybe I would crop it. I think maybe bringing, is there any red in this? I think maybe I would crop it in this like more chaotic area. Okay. Because I like, I click the thumbnails. Even that one is kind of related too. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see these, like how these pair together. Um, so you are really good at illustration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. And adding textures. I mean, it's this nice. is this is really beautiful. Oh yeah, nice. I like the skull. Do what you is, do prints? Like, do you do um, like this as a screen print? Would be so cool. It'd be a pain in the butt because you'd have to do so many different screens. But it would be, especially with that um, with screen prints, that that feeling of the ink. The different mm -hmm. layers of ink um, with the paper background. This would be like I would have this in my house. Nice. It is a 
It is a print. Um, nice. This is super cool. And the like the map texture of the topography. I mean, it adds such an element. Like it. I don't know how to use my words correctly right now. Um, the textures really make the illustrations for me. So I'm assuming. Yeah. With these these sort of free movements, are you then using a like a fill pattern that you're creating, or are you just like sort of like doing clipping masks? Because I'm interested in your decisions. Like, my brain would love to know how to like think about having this one with this type of like how to do the imagery cor correctly, so it has that sort of like elegantly disheveled like mm -hmm. like it. I, I think mine would look too uniform if I tried to do this. Hmm. Um, That's all illustrated. Which is natural, yeah. I mean, this huh. is so cool. What else we got here? Ooh, yeah. Was this like partially C40? Like Whoa. Google SketchUp. This would be cool to, some of these would be really neat to make move to where like going back through and maybe just, um, Getting like a like a either isolated fog layer or a, I don't know something else and just adding like a little bit yeah, of movement to some of fun. these would be really crazy. Especially these what we were looking at before, like subtly having these textures shift a little bit because mm -hmm. it starts playing with um. I want to say the Z index because that's how I do it with web like parallax. Mm -hmm. um, what is the term for that? No, it's <laughs> for the when same. you're not on the for when you're not talking about the internet. Yeah, I mean it would depth. still be a. It adds depth, right? Yeah. Is that the word I'm? I'm uh. Yeah. Yeah. Parallax these, is right. Like have yeah, these reflections in the are on point. Like honestly, that is that is amazing. Figuring out how light and reflections work is super super challenging, and I've even like, I've borked it a few times. <laughs> you borked it. This is really beautiful work. Oh, wait. Oh, daily creative challenge. Can we just see what they... Heck, yeah. Oh, um, see, these are sexy. Yeah. I love so this. That's so cool. And even, like, the shadowing is a little bit purple. It just mm. makes it... Fast food. Ooh, I like this, too. These would do Flame. really well. There's a whole web trend right now where people are doing this um, with um, image, like, weird... They're layering it in their website, so it looks like their websites have like holes in them. Oh. Um, and that would be kind of cool if you were bored one day, and I don't know if you know anything about CSS or HTML, but you made some like weird, like uh, micro sites, like little websites where you explore your your things that interact on scroll, like making them interactive oh. would be kind of crazy. Nice. Yeah, like this. This is super cool. Put a flower. This is like a. a in there. Yeah, or have like a like maybe this is like outer space. What was the what was the challenge? Um, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I like that you're participating in the challenges. Oh no, those are cool too. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's so scary. This is nice. Friend, do you use of... um? Did you use any, what is it, displacement mask? What is it, displacement mask? Displacement layers to get the texture from one, from a PSD into the e lettering? It's a sneaky trick, I feel like. A uh, clipping mask in Illustrator, maybe? No, it's like, uh, it's. I think it's displacement something. It's not clipping, it's what it's doing is it's taking essentially like the textures, like you can do a wrinkled shirt and then instead of just doing multiply, it'll actually bend oh, your yeah, image. The, yeah, displacement map, you're yeah, correct. Yeah, displacement yep. maps. Um, this yeah. is really awesome. I the would definitely surface well. some of this stuff down here to the top and have, like I think this, this, and maybe this could live together, like one, two, three, and just start, because you're already pairing things here, but you've got other ones that are like this. Um, deeper down here, so maybe changing, is this where we just saw that? Do you like a like a like a deep thumbnail crop of this? Okay, one minute. Left. Oh god, we're running out of time. So this is good, and I'd say you you know some of these are so strong. You're awesome. <laughs> I, I think some of these you could probably even like you do without. Like these two can be combined, but maybe you don't even want to show them. Is yeah. A thought. Depending on again, showcase the work you want to get and that you're proud of. Yeah. You don't have to be everything. Yeah, but definitely. Brian, you I've are the man. Yeah. 
You are the man. We really appreciate you. And uh, of course, we really appreciate you, Victoria. Here's a little gift for you. You can open it up in a second, but we wanted to just thank you so much for hanging out with us for three days. Thank you and for everything. having You've me. You've been fantastic. You can always watch the recordings or the on-demand sessions as well. Oh, uh, yes. So, but we have Nathaniel Dodson up next. Michael Jarrett. So stay with us, everybody. Thanks so much.